in this episode of Alaska State Troopers. The troopers patrol Alaska's version of Mardi Gras. But far outnumbered in the backcountry, things can go sideways in an instant. We are literally out in the middle of nowhere. Just him. Are you challenging me to a fight? When a group of men challenges Sergeant Quist's authority, troopers must rely on their training and instinct. Stay troopers, stop playing with them! And sometimes, a bit of discretion goes a long way. Am I going to regret letting a drunk guy take a drunk guy home? I promise you won't. <laughs> yeah! Hey! <laughs> and Trooper Peterson patrols another Alaskan celebration. <laughs> where some revelers decide to take the party to the streets. Fox, Charlie Echo. What's, what's the story? No sirs. Okay. No sirs. No sirs. You sound drunk and you smell drunk. Step out of the car. Come on out, partner. Yeah, partner. You got any weapons on you? No, sir. Come back here. Keep your hands out of your pocket. Deep in the wilds of Alaska's Hoodoo Mountains, over 12,000 people have gathered for a four-day party, turning this typically serene landscape into the fourth largest city in Alaska. They call it Arctic Man. one of Alaska's biggest, wildest, and most dangerous parties. Heavy drinking. Oh, I don't stop because they beer. All right. You guys want a beer? High-powered snow machines. <laughs> and one of the most insane ski races ever imagined. make this event an enormous challenge for the Alaska State Troopers. Yeah. Lieutenant Lonnie Pascoya briefs his troopers on the coming weekend. Nobody goes to the beer tent alone. If you go anywhere in the park, I'd like you to pair up. Uh, it's good practice. I don't want uh, you know a bunch of rowdy guys that are highly intoxicated go after a trooper or an officer. It's just not going to happen in our watch. The event is 75 miles from the nearest police station and almost 170 miles from the nearest hospital. In such a remote location, the logistics of creating a trooper post from scratch are daunting. We literally have to set up another state trooper post temporarily for this event. This year, troopers beef up their presence by adding a mobile command center with satellite service and a masked camera to aid in monitoring the camp. This event, for the next four days, we, we could have as many as 12,000 people. There are 1,380 sites for motorhomes here, so we could have that many motorhomes. It's a large event. This is significant. I mean, we are literally out in the middle of nowhere. They have only 24 troopers and officers on scene, one for every 500 partiers. So Lieutenant Piscoya has his men constantly drive around the grounds. switching up their vehicles and patrolling the same area. This gives party goers the impression that there are more troopers than there really are. We just hit it hard the very first day. And with everybody out on patrol, everybody out on the, on the roads, every trooper out in their own vehicles out here, people are convinced. We've had people come up to us asking us if there's over 100 troopers here. And I'm fine with that. If you weren't seeing us, you know, if we didn't have the patrols out here so that people could know that we're here, 
you'd feel like, yeah, you really, you know, are in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's not like you just pick up the phone and call 911. First of all, the phone's not going to work here. But even if the phone did work here, it'd take forever for somebody to respond, at, you know, to this, you know, to here. But because we are living here, it doesn't take us long to respond. We're here. Wildlife Trooper Sergeant Scott Quist is used to patrolling the wilds of interior Alaska for hunters and their kill. But at Arctic Man, he's on the lookout for a different version of wildlife. 10 I missed what you were looking for. It's not long before Quist spots an intoxicated man stumbling down the road. Hey, that's our guy. Hey, I'm concerned about you. Are you okay to walk home? Uh, no. No. At this remote mountain party, passing out drunk in single digit temperatures can mean death. I'm concerned about you walking around here. You're going to tip over. Do you need a ride? No, I don't know. I can't see. Okay, how far away is it? Uh, right down there. Down there? How far? Um, I'm not sure. This is the first time I've ever been here. Okay. You know, the temperature here at Arctic Man was about 10 degrees. If an uh, intoxicated person passes out uh, someplace out of view of his buddies, he could very well die. I was just, I have him. I'm concerned about him because no, it's okay. he's I have him. pretty intoxicated. I know he is, but I have him. All right. I was looking for him. That's why I was scared. I was like, where is he at? No, he's fine. He won't okay. be drinking anymore. Good choice. Yeah. As day becomes night, the temperatures fall, but alcohol consumption's on the rise. Things are starting to heat up a, li a little bit. It's uh, the sun is going down. People are back from their day of snow machining in the mountains, and they're likely headed for the beer tent. Nightfall for us means business. You know, we don't have a clue what's going to happen over the next two nights. Uh, um, don't have a clue. Don't have a clue. In the command center, the mast camera on top of the truck is already paying off. There's three of them there. Zoom in a little bit more. Let's Zoom in, there. in, in. Looking drunk. It's the midnight shift change on Thursday night. And in addition to the usual safety patrols, troopers have another mission, stopping the sale of illegal drugs. Suspicions of a drug dealer arise when a suspect offered trooper Howie Peterson a sample of his product earlier tonight. I'm off duty, I'm in plain clothes, and I'm uh, just standing there watching people and stand by another trooper who's off duty, and this dude, comes up to us and uh, he sticks uh, marijuana right under my nose. He's just like sticking it up to my nose. He's like, dude, smell it, smell it. And I'm like backing off. I didn't even know what he's putting under my nose. You know, I don't know this guy. And uh, he, so he's sticking this marijuana. I want me to smell it, you know, because it's good weed and he probably wants me to buy it. And uh, I, I just kept saying, hey man, uh, do you uh, remember me? And he's like, no, no, it just smells good though, right? It smells good. And uh, I'm like, no, do you remember me, man? Just like four hours ago, I talked to you up on the mountain. He's like, smell it, man. Did you smell it? it? Smells good? And I'm like, no. I was just handing out badges to your kid. And he just looks at me and puts his hands in his pocket and just walks away. <laughs> Peterson didn't arrest or cite the individual then in hopes of building more than just a possession case against him. You guys can be on foot and, and be a, a half block away or something. An undercover unit is currently trailing the suspect. Troopers Potter and Strobel head out to back them up. This is a dangerous job. Let's go. Lieutenant Pascoya stays behind to monitor the situation from the mobile command center. We'll just watch from here. The cover of darkness helps conceal the trooper's presence. Oh, right there. You know who that is? Yeah. yeah. So let's just, uh, let's watch this. We're following some of our undercover uh, guys that are trying to make a drug buy from somebody. And we're just listening to them on the radio. And when they tell us that they've made the buy, then we're going to uh, kind of move up and try to make an arrest. 
but unfortunately we're always on doper time so we have to um, respond when they when the deal goes down not when not when we want it to but the undercover unit loses his visual on the suspect in the hectic crowd the team puts the operation on hold for tonight until they can get a location for the suspect's mobile home. With more than 1,300 campsites and only two days, the odds of finding it without following the dealer are next to nothing. We'll give it to the next shift that comes on duty and, and then the next shift after that. And after, after the third time, everybody will know. So we'll keep an eye out. The epicenter of both celebration and inebriation at Arctic Man is the beer tent. Anybody see these guys are blowing marijuana in my face and I hate marijuana. It messes my eyes up. I do not do marijuana. It's not good for my eyes. Only four bouncers work the tent, packed with a raucous crowd of hundreds. Troopers are fully aware of how quickly things can spiral out of control. We're just kind of control some chaos in the bar right now. Intoxicated folks are getting kicked out. People making out in the outhouses are getting kicked out. Uh, people fighting are getting kicked out. Just outside the beer tent, Sergeant Rick Roberts detains a man accused of throwing beer cans at party goers. Did you see me throw something? We had liquid come across and hit the tent. When I came around the side of the tent, the only three people were- I was were standing there, the yes. Three, I was standing there. The hey, don't you raise your voice again. Did you see me throw something? Because We'll come back and see you. Okay. Did, if you guys try to do that, so you don't, so you don't know nothing. You didn't throw nothing. That's kind of gross. Man. Oh, we'll come back and find in a second if we get something else. Uh, if he says he can throw, saw me throw something, perfectly fine with it. But okay. guess what? What about you telling him that you threw something? I didn't tell him I threw anything because if I did, I didn't. But guess what? I almost guarantee you 100% did not throw one thing. How come you can't, how come you can almost guarantee? All right, I'll give you 100%. I could not, I did not throw one thing. I mean, I admit that, like, I mean, if you consider throwing, like, stumbling around and dropping stuff off my sleeves, if you're that throwing something. So did that happen? You dropped something out of your sleeves? No. This isn't the first time troopers have dealt with a man tonight. Is it tonight? You got punched by some girl over there? Oh, tonight. Tonight you got hit? Yeah, I got hit really bad. How come you got hit? It hurt me really bad. How come she hit you? She hit yeah. me because I was like, I was trying to hit on her really hard and she was just like, hey, I don't want to be hit on right now. And she hit me and then like, she ended up like hooking up with me, but that's all I can handle. Fist punch here or open slap? Uh, it was kind of, the first time was a fist punch and then open flat the second time. She must not have been into you then. Yeah, my face was right after it. All right. I kind of hurt, but then after that while, you know what? You're drunk, you're like, hey man, I'm numb as f Who gives a f hey, don't, don't screw on me, man. Oh, bro, I know. The victim decides not to press charges, but troopers are left with a mess on their hands, getting him home. How right toxic are you, buddy? He wants to know who hey, he wants to know who Space Man is. <laughs> Scale of one to ten, one being not much, ten being a lot. A seven. Like a seven. seven. <laughs> All right, so Arctic Man's a seven. What do you like? A twelve? Oh, uh, you go right Scale of one to ten. Sixteen and a half. I know what's You're a sixteen and a half. All right, you are in charge of getting Space Man back to your camp. I will make sure. Yeah, and making sure he doesn't throw anything. Anybody no, else. it's an ice cave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I will take total control of him. Am I gonna regret letting the drunk guy take a drunk guy home? I, I, I promise you won't. I promise you won't. All right. I try not to it. try not to wet your pants. Try not to get hit by any girls. Okay. All right. It's what it happens, right? <laughs> take two of you home, man. Who's, hey, who's getting on national discovery? <laughs> yeah. Not this guy. Hey. <laughs>
Back inside the tent, a drunken brawl breaks out. Dan Dan in the beer tent. What's going on tonight? Well, I mean, a friend of mine had a uh, costume suit on, a uh, Santa Claus costume suit. Okay, yeah. And he grabbed it off his hat, so I said, hey, that's his hat. And so I grabbed it, and he pulled it back, and he kind of like tried to put me in a chokehold, so I grabbed his leg as I went to the ground to try and pin him to the ground as well. All right, did you get hurt at all? Uh, did you hit him or anything no, like I, that? There was no, I didn't throw any swings at all. All right. Yeah, he just said he wasn't trying to start anything, you just like hit him or something, wasn't trying to piss anybody off. And they, then he put him in a headlock. Injuries. What may warrant an assault arrest on the streets is just a stern talking to inside the chaotic venue. No more beer tin tonight, okay? Yeah, he's gonna, you're, this guy here is gonna take you, okay. take you home. Well, no, will you, will you please tell him the music is loud and people are in each other, why would he try to hit me? Like hey, let's, let's just let it end, okay? Let's let it end right here. <laughs> Man, the next day is practice day up on the mountain for Arctic Man's main event, the Ski and Snow Go Classic. All right. It's an event totally unique to Alaska. <laughs> Skiers push off from the summit known as the Tit. Through 1,700 feet of rugged mountain terrain to the canyon for the most difficult and uniquely Alaskan leg of the race. In the canyon, racers hook up with a snow machiner and are towed at speeds of up to 86 miles per hour up the treacherous slope aptly named First Aid for its high number of crashes. You throw into that, you know, a 150 horsepower sled pulling you up the hill as fast as you can. You know, pretty much staying behind an ice shredding machine throwing it at you at 150 miles an hour. So, uh, you know, you put a nice glove over the family jewels and get behind the sled and give her help. From there, it's full speed ahead to the finish line. You mix the two disciplines, you know, skiing and, uh, and snow machining, where typically you have, you know, last time I was dealing with a skier who was in a town hall meeting, they're complaining about each other, you know, and now you bring them here and we're all on the same, in the same venue together having a great time. It's just, it's an amazing event. Back in the camp, today's party is already starting. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Sergeant Quist gets word of some unsettling news. So on the, the other side of the, um, the row of vehicles, there's a camper. There are two indiv male individuals there. They've been bothering girls, offering to uh, give them beer and trying to get them inside the camper. And these are young females that we're talking about. So we're just going to go make contact, see what we can find out. Seven years. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's true or not. I'm just telling you what. Bring your girls here and let's talk to them face to face. I'm just telling you that this is what we heard and I want to talk to you about it so there's, just, there's no issue. Oh, no, I don't. Quist just wants facts, but both father and son seem intent on grappling with the troopers. Uh, Take the cameras out of here. We got four kids and a granddog. I don't need them. No. I'm just telling you what, what we heard. We're doing our job. Right here. Yeah, yeah, I have the right to be confronted by my accuser. Don't tell us to get out of here. He's my son. He can stay here. Stand by a minute. Call it in. And 
we're gonna find up. Men from neighboring campsites gather around the troopers, and the situation quickly escalates. Adam, we are counting. No, he no. Why are you touching me? Adam, it's a situation. No, he... Troopers gotta go. Troopers gotta go. The angry crowd far outnumbers troopers Cox and Quist. It's time to call for backup. Backup arrives. And after a tense moment, the rowdy crowd disperses. Uh, basically, we went to follow up on a complaint and confronted the gentleman and he uh, started becoming a little confrontational. Him and his son were starting to get a little, a little confrontational and the people next to him, uh, they got involved and started uh, grouping up and becoming hostile and confrontational. And uh, there was just the two of us, so we called in for assistance and they just kept uh, ramping it up until everybody showed up and then, you know, things, things kind of calmed down and now it's settled down and we're going to clear. Back in the command center, troopers catch a break in yesterday's halted drug investigation when the eye in the sky spots the suspected dealer. Well, this time we're not going to lose him today. What we want to do is we want to build probable cause in this case. Uh, we suspect that he's uh, a good-sized dealer, has his stash somewhere else. So what we'll do is we'll send in an undercover uh, uh, officer in there to, to hit him up, see if he'll sell to the U.S. To the, uh, see and if he sells uh, maybe he'll take him back to where the stash is to, to make the transaction and, and hopefully we'll uh, get the supply of whatever he brought into Arctic Camp and we'll take down a dealer. Once again the mobile command center is proving to be worth its weight in gold. We, we just can't simply do this with our old command center. We've got eyes on him until we can get our people out there, but right now we can communicate with our drug investigators and let them know his location from, from right here. While Sergeant Cox briefs the undercover unit on their new intel, Lieutenant Pascoia keeps constant watch on the suspect's current location. Is that his daughter, Dan? Two kids and his wife right there. He just can't stand still, could he? Non-stop, non-stop. Talk, 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 talk. Pretty animated person, isn't he? Boy, oh boy. At the base level, all they are are salesmen. Yeah. They're just selling a... Now he's a snow machine fan. Yeah. Next week, you know... He was a boxing fan the other day. Yeah. He's a chameleon. They know he's been dealing. Look at that. They're making a deal right there. What's he got? He's got money. No? Now, they have the tape to prove it. No, well, that's drugs. But a simple deal isn't enough for the troopers. We want the uh, to find his stash, his his whole supply. We don't want what's on his person. We want where he's stashing everything and keeping it. To do that, they must still find the location of the suspect's trailer. But with the massive amount of campsites at Arctic Man it's easier said than done. The troopers decide to get proactive and approach the suspect on foot, hoping to find out where he's staying. You guys have a good uh, yeah, week yeah, yeah, we, 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 we flew here from Portland, Oregon. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, we came in from Portland. You guys want we flew uh, out of Sandy, oh, right at the bottom of Mount Hood. Yeah. Yeah. Portland? Yeah, we came from Oregon. We flew into Anchorage, ran into Motorhome from ABC yeah. Motorhome. Oh, no drove kidding. around for a couple days saw some whales and stuff, and then got a snow machine from uh, Alaska Toy Rentals, and then came out here. Where'd you, where'd you see whales? I got uh, water, sewer. I got all kinds oh, of Kenai stuff. Fjord. Yeah, yeah, totally. It was totally cool. Wow, I've you never been to Alaska. Right Alaska's a nice place. Yeah. Oh, they're... No, they're out of the wow. okay, And I've never seen a bald eagle in my entire life either. No kidding. I'm 41 years old, never seen a bald eagle. Wow. The suspect accepts Trooper Howie Peterson's offer for a ride back to his campsite. Yeah. Solves the problem of finding out where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
This is too good to be true, guys. <laughs> the Howie magic. I think he said the 780s is where they were at. Yeah, it's just right he there. Turn, turn, turn left, and it's right we over there. We just barely lost him last night when you know he went around the corner. It was just too dark, so this is good. Peterson drives the suspect all the way to his trailer. Once they know his location, it's up to the undercover unit to get probable cause for the search warrant. This is uh, Echo 52. I just dropped off your individual. Would you like to know what spot he's in? <laughs> Echo 52, Echo 52. Echo 52, Echo 52. Echo 52, Echo 52. Echo 52, Echo 52. Echo 52. Echo 52. Echo 52. With the new intel, the troopers now have the luxury to take a step back and plan out the operation. But now, word comes in about another suspect that could change everything at Arctic Man. We, we have a gentleman that we got wind uh, that he might be at the Arctic Man event. He is currently uh, wanted for murder one. About a month ago in Fairbanks, we had a case involving uh, uh, several people at the parking lot of one of the local restaurants uh, in the outskirts of Fairbanks. Got into an altercation and one guy produced a handgun and shot the other guy and then left. So what I've done is I've asked Ask the dispatcher to send us a picture of the individual and uh, we've given it to the troopers working the shift and they're going to the uh, beer tent and on their patrols they're keeping an eye out for him. Just outside the beer tent at the Arctic Man Festival, a man calls the troopers over for help. Hey, 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 hey. What, what's going on? It's my sled. Come talk to me. Yes, sir. Come on. No problem. What's going on? Oh, what you, I, just, I just was trying to tell him okay. that it was my sled. Do you have your ID on you, bud? Yeah. Sure. Okay. A dispute over ownership of the snow machine leads the troopers to intervene. And what did you see exactly? Uh, I walked over to get on my sled to turn around and head back to camp. And he was sitting on it, and I was like, uh, what are you doing, dude? He's like, I'm trying to start my sled. And I'm like, that's my sled. Oh, OK. And he's like, no, that's my sled. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to tell anybody that is not your we sled. Tried right, so you saw him trying to start it. And that's it. when I waved you guys over. I OK. Like, I just want to put it away, make uh -huh. sure no one else can ride it. I just want to go home. And All right. Like, well, let, let, let's see Let's see who it belongs to here. Let me make sure that it's yours here. Where'd you get that key from? That's your key? I think so, yes. Okay. The only thing I was making sure is like if no one else has the key, I'm gonna make sure I have the key and I'm gonna like, take it home and just walk home. Like, I don't right. anyone else having the key. Yeah. It turns out this particular snow machine doesn't take a key at all. Okay. I mean, there's no keyhole at all. You can look at it, it's a little <laughs> nipple that sticks. It's an electronic you know. start? Yeah. Okay. There's no, there's no yeah, keyhole there's no in key it. Hole. Oh, but is this your sled? Oh, I think it is. I'm not sure yet. Uh, how many uh, how many drinks have you had tonight, sir? Several. 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 All right, yes. sir. Uh, you know, you just know you can't be riding, sir. Oh, no, you know. No, no question. Yeah. I agree with you. But I you're sitting you. on the sled trying to start it, and right. All I'm saying All right. is, attempting to start the snow machine while drunk well, is a potential not. DUI charge. Um, if that was guess. a big deal. Officer Pete Steen arrives to give the suspect field sobriety test. Okay. He jumped onto this sled here. Attempting to take it with this key. Okay. Oh, nice. And they told him multiple times, dude, it's not your sled. He says, yes, it is. He's trying to drive off with it. He told me on tape, I'm trying to drive with my sled. Okay. All right. Mr. Ballard, how you doing? I'm Officer Steen, Trooper's Highway Patrol. Why don't you step over here? Well, just how much you had to drink tonight? Oh, uh, a couple beers, sort of. Okay. Well, we got to do some stuff, stuff here, find out how much you had to drink tonight, okay? Okay. Steen asks the subject to recite the alphabet. Can you tell me the English alphabet? E to P without singing it? E to P? E to P. Um, okay, yeah, go ahead. E D H I A P Q E. Okay, can you count backwards for me from 69 to 54? Yes, 69 to 66 is 64. 69 to 66 is 5. 
60. 59. 58. 59. 56. off, Marner. What sled? Uh, the one that just left. It didn't belong to you. You tried to take off with it, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Back over this way. On the other side of the RV park, Bravo 24, one, eight, two. Trooper Nieves gets a call to back up a trooper who suspects a group of men are in possession of marijuana. Oh, you guys have your IDs with you? Yeah, awesome. We're going to have you step out one at a time. I'll have you step out first. We can smell something. It smells like marijuana. If any of you have marijuana on you right now, it would be in your best interest to just produce it right now. If it's personal use, it's a ticket. But if you're concealing it on your person, if you have enough that where it's going to be for distribution, then we're going to have issues. Does anybody have any personal use on you? No, sir. All right. Well, we'll have you step out first, sir. Everybody will stay in the vehicle. All right, have you step out, sir? Let me talk with you for a sec here. Come here, sir. Sir, I could see in your face, I could see in your eyes. Do you have the personal use marijuana on you? Just get rid of it. No, I don't got it right now, but... But did you smoke earlier? Yeah, we smoked earlier. Okay, that's why we're smelling it. Is there any in the car right now? Um, I'm not sure. There could be. I don't know. They search another passenger and find evidence that may point to more than just personal use. Okay, are, they, are they saying anything about the selling? That guy has 20, I mean, he's probably got $1,000, $2,000 on him in 20s. With possible drug dealers on their hands, troopers call Sergeant Quist for additional backup. Hey, Sergeant. How are you guys doing? So you don't have any anything in your pockets, anything you need to tell me about? Nothing, I need to do nothing. Okay. I'm not, I'm not All right. The driver and passenger still deny there's marijuana in the vehicle. Is that any drugs in here at all? No, sir. No? Sir, no. Uh, With consent from the driver, Nieves searches the truck. what he's looking for. So he gave consent for a search. When you look inside the vehicle, you'll see we do a methodical search. What indicated where the marijuana was was right here on the glove compartment. You can see the residue on the top here, the marijuana residue, and then the bottle containing several ounces of marijuana plus a, an individual baggie inside and you can see residue all throughout the inside of this uh, glove compartment and then of course when you have those quantities of marijuana you're just gonna smell it hey everybody pay attention real quick okay look at me here if any one of you has paraphernalia or anything else I need you to put it on the hood now the worst that happens is just a ticket but if we find out that you have it on you you've concealed it from us and you're being deceptive then we're gonna bring you in Okay, so anybody who has a pipe or wrapping paper on them or any other paraphernalia, you need to put it on the hood right now. Pipes. If you have a pipe or anything, just put it out here right now. Although it seems a substantial amount, with no other paraphernalia, the marijuana itself is not enough to warrant a distribution charge. This isn't like... Colombian smuggling quantities, okay? So that's why we're not alarmed, we're not pulling our guns out or anything else, but okay, we can't have this stuff here at Arctic Man right now. So does anybody else have anything on them right now that you need to disclose to me right now? I just smoke's in a lighter. All right. The individuals are cited and released with a summons to appear in court.
as the sun rises on the third day of the Arctic Man celebration. It's time for race day. And the action moves from the beer tent and RV park up the mountain. There's thousands of people moving in through here because this is a, a staging point that they used to get up to what they, they call the tent at the big start point where the skiers come down. And so this kind of is like a big funneling point where everybody comes here to make it up the hill. At the top of the mountain, racers gear up for the start. Bring it on, right? Let's go. The five and a half mile race to the bottom is off and running. Besides just watching this event, people come up to enjoy the terrain themselves. And with snow machiners of all skill levels on the hill, the troopers are there to make sure nobody gets seriously hurt. Tumbler. Yep. He's moving. He's holding his leg. He's, he's doing the he's doing the good old, yeah, I'm not really hurt, but boy, that really hurt. Yeah. You know, most of the stuff we had in years past, it wasn't in a big group setting like this. A couple was, guys yeah. went off and did their thing. Yep. You know, because they're like, yeah, let's go learn. And then they figure out, yeah, maybe we should have learned around a whole bunch of people with some EMTs or something. <laughs> yeah, right. This year's race goes off without any serious injuries. The winning team edges out second place by just one second. As the sun sets on the last night of Arctic Man, the party rages in the beer tent. And the window to arrest the suspected drug dealer narrows. I can't imagine that he's going to leave on the last night and not sell everything he's got. Yeah. Having located his campsite earlier that day, the undercover unit attempts a buy. So they were just... over there. Inside the command post, Lieutenant Piscoya waits for confirmation that drugs and money have switched hands. They've been looking for him. He's been holed up in his trailer for the last two or three hours. If the buy happens, uniformed troopers will rush in to make the arrest. They'll hook him. And you guys need to secure the uh, RV, and then we'll apply for a search warrant. 52-2. Throughout Arctic Man, patrol troopers stand by for the call to action. We're going to need lots of troops on this. This is coming to make contact with everybody. We're going to copy. I'm heading that way. The buy goes down, and the troopers get ready. 52-2, you should have three other units approaching. Additional surveillance information about the campsite comes in. Yeah, those are all his friends, so that's why we want this many units. We have to worry that there's thousands of folks here uh, that may decide to help out this guy because he's been he's gone around and contacted uh, tons of folks. Careful, get everybody ID, make sure that there's no weapon. The troopers move in. Yeah, are we detaining everybody? That's the front of it. Sit down, have a seat. Don't shoot my dog. Well, don't fetch your dog on us and it won't get shot. While troopers quickly take control of the scene, Trooper Peterson apprehends and interviews the suspected drug dealer. I did bring it up here. I sent it up here. I did it. I'm not going to lie to you. I did it. That's how I have that. That's from my house. From the mail. Yeah. yeah. And you pierced it. The suspect continues to deny selling anything at Arctic Man, unaware that he sold to officers minutes ago. I do not sell that. I, I give that to my patients. And it is totally 100% me. 
maybe not here. I'm sorry. I brought it to your state. So what were you thinking when you came up with the weed? I mean, at what point did you recognize that I was a cop? This is what I told my wife this morning. I said, remember the guy that handed us the badges? Because I know you were probably a little tripped <laughs> no, out about right. that. I did. I got home and I said, remember the guy that handed us the badges that put the badges on the kids at the snow machine? And she was I like, give yeah. you badges and you give me pot. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> it's, it's ironic. I should watch my P's and Q's, shouldn't I? Investigator Scott Johnson takes it from here. So you've been you've been going around Harder Man giving samples, right? I have. Okay, you're not selling any weed. Never. I have not sold a single bit of weed. Do you know what I've given probably an ounce of weed away to everybody? Okay, right. so you have sold no weed to not anybody. Zero. Okay. All right. Because obviously in the state of Alaska, it's a crime if you sell weed, right? I have not sold weed. Right, I'm just you understand that it is, right? Probably in Oregon too. I it is. Totally. 100%. Oregon's the same way. You, I don't sell weed to those people. I give them weed okay. for... So if I asked anybody around here, hey, did he give you weed tonight? And they, right. But they won't say you sold it. No. Go. Start asking. Okay. Did he have any money on you? Yeah. yeah. I have money on my own, though. No. Right. Would it, would it surprise you for me to tell you that the guy with the afro tonight, he's an undercover. Okay. And what we do is we have money that we photocopy before we give to you. Right, Would it surprise you that, that this is our money? No. Because you sold us weed tonight, $150 worth. Okay? Okay. But the bottom line, you can't sell weed in the state of Alaska for profit. You can't do it. Troopers transport the suspect to Arctic Man's mobile jail to await charges. With the suspect's consent, the undercover unit searches his RV. What they find will determine the severity of his charges. And uh, just like the undercover officer advised that we'd find, uh, he saw this when they were originally weighing it out, uh, that we'd find the additional marijuana. It looks like he's uh, actually shipping it up here in jars. Uh, the scale for weighing it, there's a grinder to chop it up with. He has papers for smoking it. Also, this is uh, actually hash oil and uh, that's going to be in here. This is an additional felony. And he's been selling like a madman throughout the Arctic, man. He doesn't have very much left. He was trying to offload the rest to, uh, to our undercover. The evidence is enough to arrest him for two felonies. I, I don't think we ever would have found this guy had we not been brought back by Trooper Peterson. So that worked out really well. After a four-day shift, the Arctic Man Festival wraps up. and troopers return to their normal duties, protecting the people and wildlife throughout the 49th state. For Trooper Howie Peterson, this means back to Girdwood, where he's on duty at yet another Alaskan springtime tradition, the 33rd annual Slush Cup. What are you supposed to be anyway? Like Captain Alaska or something? Yeah, well I, I've been calling myself AK Danimal. Oh, well, that works. But, uh, yeah. You know, everyone says Mr. Alaska, Captain Alaska. You know, that can work too. Right. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. This has been going on for years, and as you can see, it draws thousands of people. And it's kind of a fun event to come and work. Right now, everyone's watching people ski across a little pond, and uh, as soon as this closes up, we're going to have thousands of people trying to get into their vehicles and drive home or party. It's going to go all night. It's going to be fun. Spectators watch as skiers and snowboarders attempt to jump an icy pond. After it's all over, Peterson returns to traffic patrol on the busy Girdwood streets. That ain't gonna fall off, right? Oh, I'm stopping right here. Okay, all right. Yes, sir. Bearhead. It sucks when your bearhead gets away from you.
it's not long before another passing driver gives him an earful. You hear that? Let's see what his deal is. How are we doing today, guys? Good. Is there a problem back there on the road? Yes, sir. Why are you yelling? Why are you screaming at me as you drive by and then almost go in the ditch? I was You were. What's what's the story? No sirs. Okay. No sirs. No sirs. You sound drunk and you smell drunk. Step out of the car. Come on out, partner. You got any weapons on you? No, sir. Come back here. Keep your hands out of your pocket. Hey, partner. Can I have your driver's license? Thanks, partner. How old are you? I'm uh, 20. 20? Okay. Is there a water in the car? I'm going to need that. Okay? Don't screw with me. Just give it to me. Pull it out. How much you got, partner? Here. I really don't know any trouble. So. No, just hold it. Just tell me what you got. That's it. Less than a gram. Okay. Anything else on you? I mean, you got a pipe, right? I don't. Huh? I don't. I have one, sir. You have one? Yes, sir. How much do you have to drink? Huh? How much did you have to drink tonight? I've had a couple of drinks before the slush cup. I was competing, so. 20, 20, 10, 60. Yeah. Do you normally talk with your words all slurred? That's how you normally talk? It's not an alcohol I thing? Had, no, no, sir. Okay, I was hitting the head as a baby by my dog. You were hitting the head? Bit in the head, I said. 2022, tonight's invalid. And then I've had. For about 10 or 11 head concussions okay. and injuries. So. Okay. All right. I'll keep that in mind. I'll put you through some tests. Do you think you can pass some field sobriety tests for me? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I buck out my overalls first, sir? Sure, sure. Right. Thank you. Did you just pee your pants right now? Nope. It kind of looks like that way. My pants? What's that? How does it look like I peed my pants? It looks like you peed your pants. Well, I, you want to see my shorts, sir? No, I think I'm. I think I'm good, man. Do you want me to demonstrate this again? And no, sir. Do you think you can do it? Nine steps there, nine steps back. Okay. Continuous. Okay. Do you, would you uh, rather go over here, away from the traffic? Would that be better? So why don't we just? Flat surface. Okay. I would love to do it on a flat surface. Flat surface. Okay. Six, seven, eight. Nah. Great. Let's try another one. Your eye test that I gave you is pretty much failing. Okay. Don't want your marijuana to fly away. Let's try another test. Okay. Let's try a one leg stand. One leg stand? One leg stand. Okay. So I want you to stand with your legs together together like this for me? Which legs? I'll demonstrate. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Do you have any injuries I need to know about with your I legs? Do. I do. Okay. I broke my right ankle three times in the past year. Okay. And it was about the size of a golf ball. To say the least. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, I'm just giving you an opportunity to pass these tests, Thank okay? Because I want right. I want to see you pass these tests. Thank you, sir. I really got to say that I don't right here is for doing this. Right here. You don't? No. Okay. Well, turn around, put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest. Okay, well. I'm not going to tell you again. Turn around, put your hands behind your back, no, you're under arrest. Did you just hear what I said? Sorry. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. Sir, please continue the okay. next one. Sir, do you want do not in here? No, we're gonna we're gonna take you down to post and have you provide a sample, okay? Well what kind of sample? Like a blood alcohol sample. Well like a breath sample. That's all we that's all we want. He takes the suspect to the Girdwood Trooper post for a breath sample. Okay, there you go. All right, you're good. He's drunk. Inside, he blows a point one six three over twice the legal limit. You know, the thought probably just didn't occur to him that he shouldn't drive while drunk, like it happens to so many people. It was plainly obvious for me, out of all those people, out of all that traffic, that that was probably a drunk driver just by uh, the way he was driving. And him yelling out of the window at me. In Alaska, we take uh, driving under the influence seriously. 
please let me go. Please help me because I didn't do I wasn't speeding. I reached in the back for my iPod and they said that I swerved. I don't know what I did. My buddy got let off the hook. Please help me. Like. <laughs> In this episode of Alaska State Troopers, the troopers patrol Alaska's version of Mardi Gras. But far outnumbered in the backcountry, things can go sideways in an instant. We are literally out in the middle of nowhere. Just him. Are you challenging me to a fight? When a group of men challenges Sergeant Quist's authority, Troopers must rely on their training and instinct. Stay troopers, stop playing with them! Oh, yeah. And sometimes, a bit of discretion goes a long way. Am I gonna regret letting a drunk guy take a drunk guy home? I That's promise good. you won't. <laughs> yeah! Hey! <laughs> and Trooper Peterson patrols another Alaskan celebration. Where some revelers decide to take the party to the streets. Fox Charlie Echo. What's, what's the story? No sirs. Okay. No sirs. No sirs. You sound drunk and you smell drunk. Step out of the car. Come on out, partner. You got any weapons on you? No, sir. Come back here. Keep your hands out of your pocket. Deep in the wilds of Alaska's Hoodoo Mountains, over 12,000 people have gathered for a four-day party, turning this typically serene landscape into the fourth largest city in Alaska. They call it Arctic Man. It's one of Alaska's biggest, wildest, and most dangerous parties. Heavy drinking. Oh, I don't stop because they beer. All right. You guys want a beer? High powered snow machines. <laughs> and one of the most insane ski races ever imagined. Make the this event an enormous challenge for the Alaska State Troopers. Yeah. Lieutenant Lonnie Pascoya briefs his troopers on the coming weekend. Nobody goes to the beer tent alone. If you go anywhere in the park, I'd like you to pair up. Uh, it's good practice. I don't, I don't want uh, you know a bunch of rowdy guys that are highly intoxicated go after a trooper or an officer. It's just not gonna happen in our watch. The event is 75 miles from the nearest police station and almost 170 miles from the nearest hospital. In such a remote location, the logistics of creating a trooper post from scratch are daunting. We literally have to set up another state trooper post temporarily for this event. This year, troopers beef up their presence by adding a mobile command center with satellite service and a masked camera to aid in monitoring the camp. This event, for the next four days, we, we could have as many as 12,000 people. There are 1,380 sites for motorhomes here, so we could have that many motorhomes. It's a large event. This is significant. I mean, we are literally out in the middle of nowhere. 
They have only 24 troopers and officers on scene, one for every 500 partiers. So Lieutenant Piscoya has his men constantly drive around the grounds. Switching up their vehicles and patrolling the same area, this gives party goers the impression that there are more troopers than there really are. We just hit it hard the very first day. And with everybody out on patrol, everybody out on the, on the roads, every trooper out in their own vehicles out here, people are convinced. We've had people come up to us asking us if there's over 100 troopers here. <laughs> and I'm fine with that. If you weren't seeing us, you know, if we didn't have the patrols out here so that people could know that we're here, you'd feel like, yeah, you really, you know, are in the middle of nowhere. You know, it's not like you can just pick up the phone and call 911. First of all, the phone's not going to work here. But even if the phone did work here, it'd take forever for somebody to respond, at, you know, to the city, you know, to here. But because we are living here, it doesn't take us long to respond. We're here. Wildlife Trooper Sergeant Scott Quist is used to patrolling the wilds of interior Alaska for hunters and their kill. But at Arctic Man, he's on the lookout for a different version of wildlife. And I miss what you were looking for. It's not long before Quist spots an intoxicated man stumbling down the road. Hey, that's our guy. Hey, I'm concerned about you. Are you okay to walk home? Uh, no. No. At this remote mountain party, passing out drunk in single digit temperatures can mean death. I'm concerned about you walking around here. You're going to tip over. Do you need a ride? No, I don't know. I can't see. Okay, how far away is it? Uh, right down there. Down there? How far? Um, I'm not sure. This is the first time I've ever been here. Okay. You know, the temperature here at Arctic Man was about 10 degrees. If an uh, intoxicated person passes out uh, someplace out of view of his buddies, he could very well die. I was just, I'm, I have him. I'm concerned about him because no, it's okay. he's.